Hey, how's it going guys? I wanted to show you the, the newest build that I've been working on. It's been a ton of fun and it's it's one of those builds where I'm trying to push the limits of everything you can do in Heist. Uh, so it's a, it's an auto bomber. It's, it works with Herald of Thunder, basically using Herald of Thunder to kill everything and then Divine Ire to uh, do single target. Uh, the way an auto bomber works is that you have Herald of Thunder running all the time and Sometimes you use Herald of Ice to just kill everything else and make a bunch of uh, shatter explosions, but in this sort of variation, I'm using Stormfire to just proliferate ignites off my Herald of Thunder, and same with Divine Ire. So I'm going to jump into a map and just show you guys uh, like just how strong this is. This is a tier 15 rare map. Um, but the idea is this is a build that's been possible for forever pretty much, but the difference in Heist League is that there's this new unique replica nebula. So I don't even have two of them yet. So everything that you see is sort of like half the damage of what it could be. Uh, but this unique allows us to get so much percent increased fire damage that it takes a build that is usually good at clearing low tier maps, but falls off on late game uh, to the next level where I can like, Herald of Thunder almost just killed that um, that ghosted rare and like i said this is only half damage so it takes it takes a build like this and absolutely pushes it to the limit uh beyond just getting another replica nebulous there are a couple more upgrades i can do but just want to show you guys exactly how strong it is it's it's pretty nuts um just to explain a little bit more about how it works i have summoned skitter bots that are allowing me to shock the enemies before they die to the ignite which is uh, proccing Herald of Thunder again, so Herald of Thunder basically never wears off and I can just walk through everything. As you can see, map layout is a little bit weird, but I think it's showing everything I wanted to show. You can see the packs just melt, even the Beyond guys. They take a little bit more time, but like here's a Beyond boss. Charge up a Divine Ire, and I put McKnight on him and he's just gone. A little bit sketchy there, but I have some more levels to get as well, so I should be able to get a little bit tankier too. Mm, I'm going to skip the Valside area for now. But yeah, really excited about this build. It's, it's really fun because it's one of those builds that you know, you can sort of try out once you've gotten all your currency throughout the league. You can give something like this that's a lot more expensive a try. And I say a lot relatively because I'm the kind of player that never gets anywhere close to like a headhunter in a league. So it's not like insanely expensive, but definitely not super accessible, especially if anything like this becomes popular. I'm gonna get a Divine Ire charged up. You can see, like, this is pretty much one ignite is melting the boss. Two should be enough to finish him off. Uh, maybe not. But yeah, there you have it. Tier 15, rare map. Um, this build is really fun and super powerful. So now I'm going to explain a little bit about how it all works. So I mentioned Replica Nebulous. The reason why this is so insane is because it gives 5% increased fire damage per 1% missing fire resistance. So all the fire resistance that you have below the 75% cap is like each one of those is 5% fire damage. So I have minus 170 fire res. That's without endurance charges. So with endurance, I go up to minus 154. So that's 154 plus 75, what is that, 124? So it's like 224 times five. It's it's like over a thousand, it's a shit ton of increased fire damage. Now, uh, the way that we make this work and not just get owned by anything that touches me that does fire damage is that, uh, first of all, I'm using a glorious vanity, which gives me this keystone. 
50% of elemental damage taken is chaos damage. So that takes away half the fire damage I would be taking. And then I also am using a talisman that has 50% of fire damage from hits taken as lightning damage. So all this leaves me vulnerable to is like fire damage over time. These two things combine. Because I have all my hits being taken as either chaos or lightning damage. Um, I guess I'll talk about the damage over time. So as you might have seen, my storm fire, which is allowing my lightning damage to ignite, has a corrupted mod of cannot be ignited, which is insane because that takes away a huge chunk of what would be uh, basically killing me in one shot. And it's it's really, I guess, helpful to have the corruption on this because my other ring has to be a Ventor to get minus more fire resistance and it has to be rolled well too. So it's it's pretty hard to get that corruption on one of these rings because neither, like Ventors is gonna be really hard to get a well rolled one. You kind of need it on Stormfire and I was lucky to find one for pretty cheap that just happened to have this. The other thing that I have to mitigate it is uh, this minor Pantheon, which has unaffected by burning ground. So that takes away most of the fire dot damage that you'll find. There's a couple map bosses like the park map. Uh, I failed my Uber lab because of the burning traps, but I'll, I'll, I'll find a layout that doesn't own me eventually. So there's a few things that'll still get you, but taking away all the fire damage from hits and then burning ground and ignite clears you for pretty much all the content with, a, with just a few exceptions. So all that said and done, at that point, we just grab all the cold and lightning we can get because I'm lowering my fire resistance further by having a bunch of thread of hopes, which are pretty cheap. They're like between 10 and 20 chaos. Uh, they allow me to do some cheeky things like get some strong uh, nodes like elemental overload, the ignite nodes, uh, without having to link to them in my tree. So through these, I get a ton of minus to all elemental resistance. So everywhere else I'm stacking a ton of cold and lightning res on my chest. And then I have a bunch of crafts that give plus either cold or lightning and chaos res. Cause it's obviously, cause I'm taking half my elemental damage as chaos. It's important that my chaos uh, res is really high as well. So uh, using this small cluster jewel, I was able to even bump up my max chaos res a little further and just max me out. So what am I at here? Yeah, I'm at 81% Chaos Res, so this is also great because, you know, not only am I mitigating a ton of elemental damage, but I don't have to worry about pretty much anything in the game that does Chaos damage. Uh, the rest of the tree is focused around getting stuff that has Ignite multipliers or enemies you ignite have minus 10 Fire Res. Um, because the, the beautiful thing about this be, this whole setup being so strong is that because I get so much damage from Replica and Nebulous, I can afford to have my Divine Ire and my main link. And as you saw, like in that entire uh, map and, and I guess boss fight, not only was I missing a second Nebulous, this is just like a filler scepter, but I don't even have a six link. Um, so Divine Ire, you know, is able to use all my links. It's going to be insane once it gets that six link. But because it's so strong, I don't even need a full five link for my Herald of Thunder to do everything it needs to do for clear. So I'm able to just put them in gloves. I do have really nice gloves that have uh, more damage over time on them and plus one level. So this is pretty much like a five link. Um, but... You could potentially do this too. I mean, again, this gear is really expensive because I even have the temp chains on hit. Um, but that's that's the price you have to pay with a build like this. I think I, I think that might be everything. I'm trying to think. Basically, everything is just scrambling to get as much cold and lightning as you can possibly get. Um, obviously, the links are just like combustion, burning damage. Ignite Prolift, Combustion, Herald of Thunder. I, I went with Burning Damage here instead of uh, Deadly Ailments because it has a less mana multiplier. And eventually I want to allocate some uh, reduced mana reserve nodes and see if I can fit a uh, Malevolence in here as well. And there's some other improvements I could make with like Cinder Swallow, stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoy. I, I know I said it's not very accessible, but 
Maybe this gives you some other ideas for Replica Nebulous. Hopefully not too many though, because I still need to buy one more and they're like 10 exalts right now. But um, yeah, I'm gonna post a Path of Building link in the description, so check that out if you're interested. But if you just wanna see how the build is doing and progressing, uh, come through and check out my Twitch as well. I'm gonna be streaming Path of Exile a little bit more, at least until I take this character as far as it can possibly go. Uh, but I'm going to leave a link to that in the description as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.